is it's going. All right, we're on. So welcome, Kendra. Thank you so much for joining us. And to everyone that's watching, we have Miss Kendra Barnes from The Key Resource. And this young lady has just inspired me um, on this journey. And I just wanted to bring her to everyone else so she can continue inspiring folks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So Kendra, I see that um, you guys, you and your husband, Reggie, you guys were living the life, living the dream. You had your nice house with your back, your fenced in backyard, your garage <laughs> in DC. <laughs> then you went to your aunt's house one night, you played the game cash flow, left there like, well, wait a minute, what are, what, what are, we, what are, what are we doing? Exactly. Yeah, we had this wake up call. So the game cash flow is like Monopoly. If anyone's watching and you haven't um, played it before, it's like Monopoly, but it really mimics real life. And so the only way to win is to make smart investments. And at the time, we didn't have any investments in real life. And so we're like, all right, we got to play this game of life better in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys did that. You went home that next day. You got on the internet and start looking. No mentor, no coach, no class. You just dove in. Yes, yeah. And we made some mistakes along the way. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing what I'm doing now, like teaching people how to learn from my mistakes. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm just looking forward to chatting with your audience and you know answering any questions. Unfortunately, we won't have questions from them because I, I, I'm still learning how to do this and not live. But I have a list of questions that we'll awesome. share. So with my, my channel um, being the mind in real estate investing, I have noticed um, that the mindset is so important, like super yeah. important to first off, knowing for yourself that you're you're capable of doing this. You're capable of doing whatever you want to do. Yeah. So it sounds like you, your first mind shift was after playing that game. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then it sounds like you're I know your story. I've I've been following you for a while. Uh, I know. I think your second mind shift came when after you bought the duplex, you weren't willing. You want you weren't ready at that point to give up your you know, your your life, your good life. Right. Yeah. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, I can't do this, especially in D.C. with no um, garage. <laughs> and then you guys went on to the fourplex. And then you start house hacking. Then you sold cars and you started making sacrifices to get to what you wanted. And that is that what you consider your second mind shift? Yeah, definitely. The first one was like, oh, wait, we're like behind <clears throat> behind the power curve because we're not investing yet. And then the second one was like, oh, wait, to really make a, a big change in our life and to build wealth, we have to make short term sacrifices. So first was we need to do this. And second was to really do it. You got to make sacrifices. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. OK, cool. And so with the the house hacking, um, did you guys do that for a year in your fourplex? A year. Yeah, because you have to live in it for a year. That's the requirement of the FHA loan. So if anyone's listening to this later and you want to do some some research, look up the FHA loan. You have to live in the property for one year and literally like a year to the date. We moved out like as soon as we could. <laughs> Okay, and, did, and 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 at that point, was that another investment? That wasn't a house hack. You just moved in your own and then just rented it out. Okay, yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, how how did you feel? Did you feel like you got the support from like your community, your environment, your family, your friends, or did they look at you like you were crazy? Oh, no. I mean, even to this day, my parents think we're doing too much. They're just like, you know, y'all need to slow down. You know, don't you have enough? Isn't this enough? And I understand that because my parents come from a generation where getting a government job and and really uh, climbing that ladder was their golden ticket. Right. And they yeah. are satisfied with that and re working all their life and then retiring. My parents are retired now. And they're like, why don't you just keep working? Like, why don't you, you know, and so it's, it's very different. They don't understand why we want to keep sacrificing. <laughs> it's a fear because they feel like you're letting go of that security that they've known all their lives. Right. But then it's like when you look because you're younger than me. I'm 43 right now. Right now. I'm 43 and I have. Um, I have a 22 year old, a 21 year old, and a 10 year old. And my 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 20 year olds, they, you know, they 
they're just built different, right? Like yeah. I've always been a little risk taker and everything, but they take it to another level. And I so admire that, yeah. like they are willing to bet on themselves. They're not yeah. afraid. And I see that in your generation. And I, yeah, and I'm like, yes, keep doing it, right? That's so what right. we had to get frustrated with how we're being treated, how we're being mm -hmm. oppressed, and and realize we got the power to take that back. Yeah, we've done that. That is definitely something that's uh, unique to our generation. Like, you know, millennials, we are definitely willing to take the risk. And, and for, for me, with real estate investing, um, whether you're a millennial or not, once you take the risk and you put yourself out there and you invest your money, you're going to figure it out because it's your money. Like, yeah. it, there's no other option. So when I put my money into a property, if plan A does, plan a does not work, plan B, C, D, you know, I'm going to keep whatever. Absolutely. It's my money. <laughs> It's no give up. It's no quit. Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I feel that. Cool. How long have you been investing? Four, four years, five years? Five years. Five years. And you and your husband were on the same page from the get-go. So that's all nice and smooth. And you're still sort of newlyweds too, right? Yeah. And we were on the same page from, from day one. We were both interested. We both jumped into it. But he's still of the mindset that, you know, he would house hack again and he would like do that thing again. I'm like, um, I don't know. I like <laughs> <my> <laughs> For me, I think house hacking is a great way for people to get started. It's it's really, really good to get your foot in the door and things like that. For him, he'd probably house hack for like the rest of his life. Because you know how men, they're just like, they don't you know, need all that. They don't need all that. Yeah. So, but you yeah. guys still Airbnb out, out of your personal residence, right? Yeah. Well, we, we stopped doing it, but we did it for like a year. Um, we. I rented out the room in our house. So that's another form of house hacking. Basically, just finding a way to like make income off of the house you live in. Even if you don't own a multi-unit, um, you can still make rental income with, with the house that you live in. Yeah. So I have a, a question for something I'm working on. I'm trying to, yeah. um, we're, we're selling our house. Um, well, I have it on the market. It's been on, the, it's our personal home. It's been on the market for about 60 days. Um, a lot of interest. But no offers. So I'm like, okay, so what's going on? You know, like, um, interesting. I, 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 I try to get creative. We we'll put it out there. I'm, maybe part of it is that I'm doing it on my own, like for sale by owner. Um, okay. I'm like, okay, so let's try the lease option, which I'm open to that because to me, that would be the first one in our portfolio. We can just move on. It's going to be mm -hmm. out of state, though, you know, and it is a, a higher uh, cost house, like the mortgages high yeah. um so you, what do you think about that if the mortgage is high is that a good rental um potential or do you want should you keep it under a certain level like how do you look at that and how did you rent your house what was the method that you went through to rent your house initially oh good question so i want to touch on three things the first is um what is the rental income in your area in your neighborhood in relation to how much your mortgage is so i don't know if you researched that already but for anyone who's watching and you want to find out the same thing what i always do is go to zillow.com and then whatever size house or apartment you're trying to rent type that in zoom in on your neighborhood and kind of see what other people are renting um, like a three bedroom or four or five bedroom for in your neighborhood um, and kind of base it off that you can also go to the um, housing office website for your city like for me i would go to the dc um section eight website and just see what the market rent is on there and kind of just average those two numbers out because you're always going to get more from a government program like section eight I'm not saying that you have to rent a section eight, but it's just a way of kind of seeing what the market rent is and then compare that to your mortgage and see if it's worth it. I didn't think about I, Why didn't I think about that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I've done all those things, but you know what I did not do? I didn't put it on the section eight. Um, and I don't mind renting section eight to be totally transparent. When I was really young, I had my children young. I was like 20 when I had my first baby and I was on HUD for about two years. And I think I came to a point well, I was able to write them a letter and say, I no longer need the assistance and I'd like to pass it on to whomever. And that was a big day because I had to let go of that support. So I, I get it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not against that name, but oh, thank you, girl. Yeah. So I yeah. had that 
I think I, I, you may have seen it online. I, I was saying I reached out to um, the minor league um, team here to try to put it on the corporate housing program. I'm just getting all kind of creative and then didn't even think about that. But OK. So, yeah, I love, yeah, I love your idea, too. I mean, in, in um, my mom was also, you know, getting housing assistance when I was young, too. And so I, I definitely understand. And there's nothing wrong with it. People do have like this misconception that Section 8 renters are a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. But you can you can vet them just like you vet any yeah. other renter. And for our Section 8 rentals, we get way more than we would make if we rented to like a regular <laughs> a market rate. Yeah, market rate. So that's one thing I would see to see if it makes sense for you to rent it. Um, and then the other thing is <clears throat> there are other ways that you can go about it. You might have like a hospital nearby. You may can rent to like traveling nurses or maybe doctors who are doing their residency. I know some people who specifically target hospitals. How do you target them? Like what, what would be the medium that I reach out? So you may go on the website and they may have like a... Um, you may go on the website, they may have like a section for, for housing, kind of like if you go on the website for most colleges, there'd be like a little tab that says like off campus housing. And as a landlord, you can list your place there. So that's really a good resource if you want college students. Um, this is great. Okay. And then the other thing, which might be a last resort for you, because you're going to be out of state, would be like looking into Airbnb and stuff like that, which is also you make tons more than you would make. And that's rental. Yeah, it's just a lot of work um, that goes into it. The other thing I was gonna say is, besides figuring out if the money is worth it to rent it versus sell it, is you talked about it being on the market for sixty days and not getting offers. Um, two questions: one, is what you listed it for? Is it like comparable to the other? Yeah, so that that's part of the problem because the area I'm in, it's. Um, Part of the, the older side of the development was like 10 years old and we're in the newer side. So it, we're three years old and there are not a lot of sales from the newer side. So the comps are really, we're sort of setting the comps. Oh, okay. So that makes it harder. And then I have a neighbor behind me who put their house on the market for two ninety nine, dollars same floor plan, same everything, except for they decked out their back. Like it's beautiful. And they have dropped their price. Theirs have been on the market for like, 90, 120 days. Uh -huh. And they dropped their price from like 305 down to 284 now. Wow. Mine was listed at 310. I brought it down to 300. And then I have another neighbor who just listed theirs for 310. Oh, so it's okay. all over the place, you know? So are they building new construction homes near you? They are. That's so tricky because it's like, why, you know, why don't I just build my own from scratch? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah. And then our HOA, we have two HOAs. So that makes it hard for me to do Airbnb because it has to be a four month minimal of a renter. So yeah, that is tricky. So um the other thing I was going to ask is, did you, did you by chance use an FHA loan? I did. Mm -hmm. So one of the really cool things about FHA loans, and you need to check with your lender because every lender is different. And I really don't like making blanket statements because people, I mean, you literally signed a contract with your lender. So right. <laughs> I don't want to speak to what that said, but usually with um, FHA loans, the loans can be assumable, meaning mm -hmm. that whoever buys your house can assume the terms that you got. And if your terms were very favorable, like if your interest rate was really low because you bought it when interest rates were better, that could be a selling point too to someone who may be getting a loan estimate of 5% interest rate. They may be able to assume your lower interest rate. Mm -hmm. Ah, good idea. I like that. I like that. Also, like marketing that um, aspect of it. This has been wow. So I wasn't even planning to get all that from you, but <laughs> woo, thank you, girl. <laughs> uh, all right. So let me try to go back to, um, to everyone else. Are you 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 are now full time investing? You were able to leave the rat race and, and say, "Here you go, yes. I'm done. Hey. Finally, finally, it's been like two years, three years in the making. I've been working towards it. Yay. Yay. That is awesome. And then I think it happened right when the government shutdown occurred. <laughs> yeah, so actually I tried, I put in my two weeks notice the day before the shutdown and then it got delayed. And so now my last day is Tuesday, actually. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Congratulations to you. 
I know that has to feel awesome. So how many like, out? I'm sorry, were you gonna say something? No, I was gonna say my coworkers are like, where are you going? What job are you going to next? And I'm like, nowhere, working for myself. And they're just kind of like, how? how do you bet? <laughs> I'm betting on me, that's how. Girl, yeah. I cannot wait to that day. I can just say, <laughs> you know, here you go, here you go. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm <laughs> so excited about that, I am. So how much, how many hours do you, would you say you spend per week on, real estate and are you guys actively seeking new properties or like how, how how's your day feel now? That's a really good question. So I don't, we don't like actively look every day, but we're always open. So we get like different emails and stuff from different like, alerts we have set up on different like uh, listing sites like Redfin or Roofstock, R-O-O-F stock, Roofstock. Um, that's one of my favorite sites to, to look at deals. So if opportunity comes across, you know, at this point, we'll look into it, but we're not like right now we're just maintaining what we have. Got it, got um, it. And for us, because we self-manage all of our properties, it looks really different for us than it does for other investors who have property managers. Mm -hmm. So we're like really hands-on. If a tenant calls, they're calling my cell phone, yeah. my husband's cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, he's calling to fix stuff, you know, personally sometimes. And so it's different. And you guys are out of state now. So is that becoming a problem or still easy peasy? No, actually we're back. We moved oh, back. Oh, I hadn't announced it, but like we're, we're, we're back. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not a secret. It's just, okay. not, yeah, so we're back. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Because awesome. where, where are you? I'm in South Florida. So it's a little city named Port St. Lucie, Florida. And that's pretty, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, it's like we're about 45 minutes north of West Palm Beach. Oh, so okay. me, my husband and I are working on moving back to Atlanta. We just moved down here three years ago and we, there was this time in Atlanta, we call it Ice Mageddon. It, it was ice everywhere. Everyone was stuck on the freeway for like 12 hours. It was crazy. I remember that. Remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And my husband was working down in Florida at the time. And he was like, why are we not? Why, why, why are we dealing with that? And I'm from Florida. So I knew how it was. And I was like, hey, if you want to go, let's go. Let's give it a shot. And now we were like, okay, we got to get back today. This ain't for us. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, now. So, um, do you think um, investing is um, something that is you're more successful at? If you have a coach, if you have a team, what would you? What kind of advice would you give towards that? So the thing is, like anyone can do it on their own. Like you literally can do it by yourself, but you're probably going to take longer to do it if you do it by yourself and you're going to spend more money. And even if you don't spend more money, you're going to spend more time, which time is money because you're missing out on opportunities to make money. And so for, for us, even though we did it on our own with literally no guidance, no courses, no ebooks, nothing, um, we would have started out better and saved tons of money if we at least had taking time to like um, pour into our education. And so I tell everyone like at least read a book, like take a course, talk to someone that you know who's doing it. Um, just try to learn before you jump out there, but don't get stuck in the learning process and like that analysis paralysis, like mm -hmm. you gotta get out there, but try to learn first. Yeah. Okay. And YouTube has, is, is, is such a great resource. There's so much information that people share. I mean, it takes you to a certain level. And I and I and I'll say I got my MBA in YouTube University when it comes to you know like real estate and all of that, right? And but then I, I I still felt like like not confident in it. Like you needed somebody to you know. Say, yeah, that's right. Or we'll look at it this way. And so I, I, I totally believe that. But then I and then the more I read and research, I'm just like, you know what? It's going to do it. I'm just going to do what yeah. I can with what I have until I get to the point to be able to do it how I want to do it. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, what, what was the um, uh, fail forward or for, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Basically, because if you don't, you're going to be sitting here like, oh, I want, I want, and I wonder, I wonder, no, time out for that. I'm like, I, what I, mm -hmm. I, I realize, too, I'm my best bet. I really am. I go hard for corporate, which is what I do now. And I'm like, no, 
I've never been satisfied with that. I've always said, I can't see myself doing this forever, you know? So I've always spoke that, but never taken any yeah. action towards that. And yeah. Well, you're like well on your way now, so. I am, girl. It feels so good, too. <laughs> and I think it's really cool that you're doing the for sale by owner, because you're going to save a lot of money doing that, too. Yeah, and I, and that's that that's my goal. And, and and for one, we're in the most desirable part of the area we are in. And I am offering a three percent buyer's commission. So wow. I felt like that would get them to bring people in. But when I have people without agents come in, I tell them, hey, you know, because you don't have an agent, I'm more flexible with my with the price and you know, trying to work it that way. So We'll see what the universe has for me out there. Yes. Oh, wait, one more question. Is there, I'm like asking you questions now. Is there a, um, a military base out there? There is not a military base, but when you said hospital, it's a hospital directly, like we can walk to it. And Cleveland Clinic just bought the hospital. So that that's like a good look. And the company I work for, I'm a, a, I'm a, a project manager in IT. The company I work for is a healthcare staffing company. So we um, find traveling nurses and all of that. Yes. So I'm like, how can I spend to that? So yeah. And those, they're really good tenants, too. I mean, to get someone that works at a hospital, of course, if you were to get someone like, you know, affiliated with a military base or something like that, those are always like really, that's a really good bet. But um, that's really cool. You already have kind of an in. Right. I need to, I need to take advantage of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, what, what? What would you say? How, how are we got like four minutes? We're like, we're like ten minutes. I think we started a little late. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> so, uh, what has been the easiest, and what's been the most challenging? The easiest. Oh my gosh, of the whole journey. Or yeah, getting from um, started in and learning, just discovering real estate investing to where you are now. Okay, let me start with the hardest. The hardest um, has been like the disappointments in real estate investing because there's always going to be disappointments. And for us, it was like finding a property, loving it and really imagining, okay, this is what we're going to do to it. These are our plans for it. We put in an offer, it gets accepted, but then somewhere in the negotiations, it falls apart. And these things happen. Like just because your offer gets accepted on a property does not mean it's yours until you've signed and you've gotten the keys, there's so many things that can happen that can like completely end a deal. And we were finding that that was happening. We get so disappointed because to us, this property was it, right? But what would happen is, so this is like one of the good things, I guess. What, what would happen was once that fell through, whatever we came across next was so much better than that thing that we were like, why do we even want that? Right. And, it was the just, universe. Yeah, just yes. Just knowing that whatever is for you is gonna be for you, there will be disappointments, like for sure. But whatever is meant to be is gonna be. That's an awesome story, yeah. And, and we go through that in all areas of life, right? We think we yeah. want something so bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you don't get it, you're like, that's why I didn't get it. Oh, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So out of all you had to sacrifice in order to get where you are, what's the one thing you miss the most? Or have you been able gotten to the point where you can get it back now? So you're not really missing anything. Um, one thing I miss the most. Oh, you, you had some really good questions. <laughs> Thank you. I just uh, thought about it from my point of view. And I mean, my answer probably would be, uh, you know, but. I'm curious. I think now I'm good, but like when it came to house hacking and like when you're house hacking, you're literally living with your tenants and, and sharing walls with your tenants. Um, I missed just like complete privacy. <laughs> yeah. so that was hard. And at the time, like I told you, we moved from a house that had like a garage and all this stuff to like living in an apartment building. And so I missed those like comforts. <laughs> Yeah, being exposed to the element when you go out in the morning to get in your car, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to take the last bit of the interview to talk about some of the programs and what you offer because it's key. And one thing that I saw and realized about you and made me know that you are really the truth 
and that your heart really is for the community. Just like I went on your site in your down payment assistance program. I've never heard you say that it's really just a offer or how do you say it? What's the word? Um, I can't think of the word, but it's the hours that one dollar. And people okay, do whatever like, you want. Do whatever you want. <laughs> like that that's you saying you have no excuse. Here is the information yeah. available right here. So I commend you for doing that and offering okay. that information to everyone. But do you want to tell about some of the other programs you have just in case people are interested? And I know you focus on first time home buyer or first time rental. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so I do both. I also have a, um, a first time home buyer society, which is like an online community. It's a kind of a way to get one on one coaching with me, um, but in a group setting. And so once a week I go into the Facebook group and I answer questions. If you have questions before you start home, your home search or while you're in it, you can just ask me. I answer them, you know, in, in a group setting and everyone is learning from each other. It's ten dollars a month, which is like really, really cheap because on the flip side of that, and this is mostly for people who are getting into investing. Um, like a one hour coaching session with me is four ninety seven, And so that's mm -hmm. usually for like the investor who's ready to literally strategize and like jump into it. But the first time home our society, it's like a monthly membership, um, $10 mm -hmm. a month. And it just offers that group coaching aspect. Um, so yeah, those are two different things that I have. And I have a lot of other resources on my site. Definitely follow me on Instagram because I'm always posting um, you know, information on there and stuff too. And are you, do you focus more on single family, multifamily or both? Both. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, everybody is different. Everyone's goals are different depending on where you live is different. Like there may not be a lot of multi-units where you live. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, so um, everybody's different. Got it. Got it. Well, cool. This has been awesome. Um, what else do I have? Yeah. I think this is just great. Oh, I know it. One quick question. Mm -hmm. System. Like what systems do you think are most important to be successful at investing? So um, I have this like property management cheat sheet. There's different tools that I that I use because we self-manage our properties. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that aside from property management, just like getting into a property, you definitely want to have like some kind of a budgeting tool. You want to understand like your money goals and, and start to like set, you know, your expectations for that. Um, there are different search engines that I recommend to people like Redfin, like Zillow, like Realtor.com. Um, also Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace actually are two like little known um, places that you can look for properties. Um, so yeah, those are just a few. I also want to share with your audience too. I'm going to send you a link to it and you can put it below the video um, mm -hmm. to my house hunting handbook and okay. I'll give it to you guys for free. Um, it's a, I don't know if you already have it. Do you have it already? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so I'll send it to you. It's a, um, it's an ebook that shows you like questions to ask yourself before you get into real estate investing, questions to ask your uh, real estate agent, questions to ask the owner of the property you're trying to buy. Um, it has like a checklist if you're trying to get approved for a mortgage of things that you need to consider and things like that. So it's like a little, a little handbook you can take around with you once you start to get in that process and make sure that you're not forgetting anything. And I think that's awesome. I heard something one day and then i heard you say at the same day i'm looking for a fourplex in atlanta so we can house hack oh, really? and, I, mm -hmm. and then i realized that the you are qualified not just on your income but also on the rental income of the yeah. property that's big that's huge that means you can really afford a property that would ordinarily be out of your price range uh -huh. so that means you can get a better property in a better neighborhood making better money Right. So, yeah, awesome. Awesome. And you you invest in, in, in the in, in black communities or all over? All over. I mean wherever the deal is, but right now we have traditionally invested in like the hood and some of the hoods that we've invested in have been gentrifying. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's not hood anymore, but it was when we first got there. And we're still the owners of it. And that's how we do it. You gotta get in there, make and, and, and get in there and hell. Not let them get all the opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, Kendra, thank you so, so much for blessing us with your wisdom and your knowledge. Thank you for the, the house hunting handbook. I'll place that link in there. I'll put a link to your Instagram and your website on the show notes. Oh, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for you and your house hacking journey. Um, let me know if you need any any help. Do you already have an agent there? I, I don't. I um I've reached out to a couple and okay. one of them asked me to send their information. She never responded, so you weren't it. And so <laughs> I have a couple other friends I just found out were agents, but they work more so on the residential. Well, home buyers, not really. Like investor. Yeah. And I don't know if I would consider that an investor because that's what it is. But yeah, what I sort of want someone who's um, knowledgeable into the investment part of it. Too. That's very important. I do have somebody I can connect you with. Well, we'll talk about it offline, but I'm super excited for um, for your journey. And thank you for having me on here. And if you guys have any questions, um, like she said, she's going to put my website below and my Instagram, DM me, you know, reach out and we can chat. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Great.